All right, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Outrun Show. I'm Travis. I'm Jesse. I'm Justin. And today we are tackling the challenge of New Year's resolutions and what our focuses are for this year. Um, but we uh, uh, drizzle in our favorite um, milk drinks. Yeah. Wow. Man, I didn't like drizzle. Drizzle. I Maybe like steam. Steam. We steam in. We steam in our... We, our the fog rolls simmer. in on, right? We think, simmer in. <laughs> stir in. <laughs> Yeah, stir in, there we go. We stir in our favorite uh, milk drinks. And we're also talking about some home gym equipment coming into the new year, what we're using, what we're training with in our in our places, and um, where how, how that ties into our, our New Year's resolutions. So all that and more on this valuable episode of The Outrun Show. All right, you guys, so we're talking about New Year's resolutions. And, uh, you know, I, I, actually, I thank you guys because we had our little, we had a, folks, we had like a remote New Year's party, right? Mm-hmm. Like a Zoom one, because everybody's families are just, that's how we organized. And uh, we were asked about New Year's resolutions. And I had, I didn't have one yet. I had a loose focus for the year, but I didn't have one yet. So you guys kind of, jarred me into doubling down on focus for a new year's resolution well and admittedly like i didn't i didn't start thinking about mine until like the night before um when carly and i had like ordered food and i was like oh i'm gonna try something new and and so and normally i actually don't like new year's resolutions i feel they're kind of gimmicky and a little like hokey right but then this year i was like you know what I'm a big kid and it can mean whatever I want it to mean, right? <laughs> it's only as hokey as I make it to be. So if I feel like it's something, and then of course, if I was like, oh, you know, this year I'm going to be a better man. Um, that does seem a little bit hokey. And I don't think I could ever convince myself to like, not take that a bit. It just hokey. reminds me of the Disney Mulan. Yeah. It's, it's a little Disney, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you know hey, what? Why does it remind you of Disney Mulan? Because there's like a whole song in like the cartoon yeah. series where they're like, they're like chanting about how they're going to become like a man, a stronger yeah. man, and she has to participate. And it's sort of like this. Yeah. I always thought it was I really weird that people were like, yeah. it's hokey. You can make goals at any time of the year. And it's like, no, the earth traveled around the sun, yo. It's significant. You can, yeah, uh-huh. you can make this a uh, significant event. His pagan just... um, underpinning <laughs> right. Yeah. right now. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I just forget, or like a few will they said it's just another day, but it's really not another day. We have uh, moved through the solar system. Yeah, we did. It's a long trip. It's a physical physical, uh, event, right? It's just on a scale that we're not observing. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely a metaphor of the container for events for the year, and that as a signature in time, in a place where the Earth will never be again, and has been, and has left quite the little trail (laughs) in 2020. Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty, also, I think that, uh, there is this slight craving for some sense of like normalcy. So it just, it does feel a little yeah. bit of a palate cleanser to have a new year's resolution. Yeah. Mean, something about it feels less serious than the last year has been. <laughs> I know it's like our, all of our new year's resolutions for 2020 was like survive. And, that, <laughs> and now we get to do fun ones, you know, now that there's like yes. hope on the horizon, yeah, hope we can see horizon. some light, but, um, but yeah, so then, then I thought, well, Maybe this year, instead of doing something that's like super philosophical or deep, I do something that's fun, mm-hmm. that still fits the vein of like who I want to be or what I want to do, um, but is a little bit more like, you know, playful and, and fun. Mm-hmm. So that's how I came up with mine, um, which I told you guys over there, which is that I will never order the same meal or drink from a place all 2021. Twice. Twice, yeah. So I've never ordered the same one twice. It, it, I always have, and it can't be like a previous drink. So like my coffee drink, you guys know, is a Breve Mocha. Like that's my go-to drink. And now in 20... But no more. Be, because I visited every coffee shop in Fort Collins, <laughs> I can't have a, a Breve Mocha from any of those brands unless it's like a, oh no, you know, like I go to Denver or I travel out of town and I go to a coffee shop and they're like, oh no, our Breve Mocha is like, like it's it's a known thing it's like it's what we're known for 
then it's a unique experience. But if they're like, oh yeah, we do brevet mochas, I can't, I can't have it. I have to have an a, a entirely reason. unique drink mm-hmm. or meal every single time for the entire year. It's gonna be. Oh yeah, you're getting a soy latte pretty soon. Uh, I actually don't mind soy lattes. Mm-hmm. Like so a like a London latte. a London fog <laughs> a London fog made mm-hmm. with soy. Oh yeah, is, I can see that. It's pretty pretty good. Good. What's the London fog? So those who are outside of the the tea coffee scene, it's uh, Earl Grey tea. Like uh, you steep Earl Grey tea in like four ounces of water, four to five ounces of water, right? And then you steam soy and you pour it over the top, and then like a couple of pumps of like vanilla. Yeah, it's bomb. It's actually it's, pretty it's, good. I it's just, got a really cool name too. Yeah, yeah. London Fog, right? Yeah. Fog. So like, there's all sorts of drinks. I've had a London Fog at, at Starbucks when I worked at Starbucks. Um, I've had you know most drinks on that menu. So it's Starbucks. is a London Fog always that, or is it just any time that you have basically Earl Grey tea and steamed milk? That, yeah, Earl Grey tea and steamed something. It seems is, 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 the, is okay. Yeah. And then you can okay. add your vanilla, or you can you can even like change your your milks up if you want or you can do less water or some people will just straight up do like a london fog that's just the milk or the tea bag steeped in the milk but that seems a little that's so i think uh alley cat does it mm-hmm. yeah because i'll still still give me the tea bag mm-hmm. but bindle has it and it's very good from bindle mm-hmm. i think they do that the method I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you make me want one i'm gonna go get one i right always forget it. about it yeah, you know, why do i get it more yeah, nice if you like if you're like i i want some i want something hot and warm that has the same aesthetic mm-hmm. of like a coffee, but isn't, you mm-hmm. know, you're still getting a little bit of caffeine from the black tea and the Earl Grey. Um, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. I always remember whenever I hear, I, it always just feels really, Earl Grey just feels like the most sophisticated tea to me because of uh, Patrick Stewart in uh, Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Tea, Earl Grey, hot. And he goes to his replicator and it's like, and it makes it. And it's like, man, that's so cool. But now I wonder if in the future, like replicators would be seen like microwaves, like it's a tacky way to get food. You know, they're on the starship. It's like what the military has. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's an MRE. It's just, just you replicator only eat it when you need to. Has no soul. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And then I think the most enlightened tea is jasmine tea. You think so? Yeah, I think when I'm going for some enlightenment, when I'm going for intelligence, I drink Earl Grey. But if I'm going for insight, I go for jasmine. <laughs> what do you, when you're feeling sassy, you go for like chai or what? Yes. Good call. I love some chai. But remember our brand. What about it? Bhakti. Bhakti. Oh. Bhakti chai. <laughs> it's, like it's funny. We had, um, we have a family from India, right? Mm. And um, they're staying out here and their mom, we have two cousins um, on our dad's side. And so they flew in um, or they've been, they've been living here and their mom flew in. And they were complaining over <laughs> Christmas that uh, they're so tired of everybody in the U.S. asking for chai tea. And they're like, that's just asking for tea tea. For tea. Just ask for chai. It's <laughs> just chai. It's not chai tea. That's tea tea. Yep. Yep. And I Which, was like, oh, I guess I never really thought about that. But they're right. Yeah, the word chai is the same in Chinese is the same. Cha. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like get with the program West. It's like India is like chai, China is like cha. Yeah. I don't know what it is in Japan, Japanese, but I'm sure it's different. Uh, There's just so much like variety. One thing that that the West does like to do though is take something and make seventy different varieties of it. So when you ask for chai, it's kind of like I don't know. You're asking for milk, and they're like, okay, what kind of milk you want? One percent, two percent, skim, breve. Right. The same thing though with like chutney. Right? Yeah. So I, I don't blame them. I just thought it was funny that they were like so hung up on that. They were like, it's just chai. It's called chai. <laughs> Hot chai. Cold <laughs> chai. <laughs> so. Yes, exactly. The, the West loves to ignore that other stuff is going on in the rest of the world. And then they just want to typically reinvent a new word, which we have been accused of from time to time too. But that was just for organization reasons with like Orbit and Terra. I feel like we caught flack for that. But that's a program. We're not saying we're doing something other than parkour, right? And it's just so common where you'll be like, oh, that's a really cool idea. And then you'll go to like some other part of the world and it will just be like a super common thing. You're wait, this is just that, <laughs> right? This is just yoga. Why did you call this something, <laughs> right? You know, so anyway, you I think that's funny. The number of milks is a is a concern for me, a growing concern. I used to just be like, oh, you know, I used to hate when people said that mindset of just, oh, that doesn't come from a cow, well then, what kind of junk is it? And now we've gone from that to I'm lost. 
and I'm open minded. Like I go into Whole Foods, which I know we're talking about going to Whole Foods, but still, it's Amazon owns it, so it's a standard now. You go to Whole Foods, and I'm literally lost. I went to get ice cream the other day in the aisle, and it wasn't even a thing anymore. Like in the past, I feel like I could look and be like, "All right, so you put all the stuff. There's Ben and Jerry's. This is real ice cream in this in this aisle here, or in this like uh, can cabinet. I don't know what do you call them." Uh, Fridge. Fridge? Section. fridge yeah. in this section of the fridge, right? So one door is real ice cream. It's very clear because you got Ben and Jerry's in there. I'm pretty sure everything has dairy in it. Then you go to the other one and it's like, it's it looks like almonds or soy or gelato. It's very clear. And now they've just gotten to the point where it's just not count. Like literally no moo is like a brand. And I'm like, okay, well then what is, if it's no moo, then what what's inside, right? <laughs> And it was so hard. I couldn't find, because they trick you now. It's just like not a cow. Like there's some innuendo that it's no longer dairy, but it's not really clear. Mm. And the same thing with the milk. I'm just like, man, I'm just looking for milk. <laughs> and then so Kenny will be, my wife will be like, well, bring me oat milk. But that isn't even clear anymore. There's like some oat pun that I have to reverse engineer <laughs> to understand that it's oat milk that I'm getting. Just buy based on packaging and branding and you never get it. You never get it wrong. You never get milk if you do that, because the better the branding and packaging, the worse the ice cream. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The less satisfying the ice cream is. Do you think it like what is it? It Andrews or whatever the is it? It no is it not, is Andrews the name of the brand? No, for the what? organic ice cream, like the just the. Oh, I don't know. Right? I haven't had ice cream in probably a year. Okay. Coolest branded ice cream is Talenti. Just get that. You're fine. Is that gelato? Yeah. Yeah. That's not. That's what you're not, not looking that for. That's dairy, though, doesn't it? Gelato, yeah. like OG. Not looking for ice cream. Like looking for packaging yogurt. or something. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you just can't good. go wrong. Okay. Yeah, but watch out. You might get like you know, Talenti Oak. Talenti Oak. And you're like Oak. What? And they're like, yeah, because we're woodsy. You guys we, can't we tell like the, like there's a clear branding and packaging. It's no, like it's getting harder. It's like diet soda. Like you can look at diet soda from like a mile we're away. Just, be like that's the guys. diet one over there. We're simple guys. So see, see it's, it's, this is it's this is why I did my New Year's resolution because I would look at that and I'd be like, nah, I like that one. I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> yeah. and, and you guys know, like I'm I'm a pretty adventurous guy. Mm. But and so yeah, now my New Year's resolution maybe I will try your like you know your nut milk ice cream or whatever mm -hmm. your ground down leaves. Uh, you know, mm. chutney. I mean, technically, so, that's know, I'll, I'll give you shit. matcha, which I also love. Mm -hmm. But yeah, matcha is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, anyways, back on topic. Justin, what you got? We were talking about oh, food, and we know uh, how wait, quickly we, we derail. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about food See? the whole See? during a culinary. We're not podcast. talking about food. We were talking about New, New Year's resolution. Oh yes. Uh, mine is welcome to the podcast. To somehow uh, force workout uh, equipment into my tiny uh, apartment, and so right now I have a. An adjustable bar to hang from so it goes from three feet to four and a half feet i believe and so that's something you can hang and do pull-ups from but you have to be an l-sit or a tuck mm. so that one uh my my that one's built for like front levers so that's my goal on that one and then i got parallel bars so planche is the progression for that one um uh, unsure uh i really only need straddle but if I can hold the normal full planche for a second or two, I'm fine. I'm really just looking for um, to use those pieces of equipment to be familiar with them. So if handstand comes into play there, because I do want to do get back into handstands, but I just can't do it on the ground anymore. The wrist flexion is too much. But so, the parallettes will make that easier. Yeah. Yep. But I am having like a hard time with it for sure. Like uh, like I, I'm getting pain in like my collarbone from doing parallel bars. So I don't know if I'll be able to handle the, the body weight stuff quite as fast as I thought I was going to be able to. You might just be going a little hard. Yeah. Yep. Just, just back off a little bit. You just, you just want your goals right now. Well, so my goal, uh, the way that I am going to accomplish this is that I just put it in my kitchen and it's in the way. You can't, there's only one way around it. So you, uh, uh, I think that's just the symptom of having a small apartment but that's the way i've always kind of liked it is i just put things right in the middle of my morning routine so that i have to walk through it mm. <laughs> to do things and so taxes when it's like that it's like in the gym you do, it's not hard to do parkour when you're in the gym because sometimes you have to do it to get to the other side so um in the apartment it's like that too it's hard to not do it when it's you walk over it's it true. it's like it's like years ago when travis moved to his house you have the rings hanging out on your patio yep. And I implemented taxes that I'm only the one that consistently pays. But yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's 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 how. Uh, well, if I get those goals, that's how it's gonna have to happen. <laughs> Can't Sweet. escape them. All right. I mean, you could move. You could move in 2021 to a bigger place. I do plan or try to plan on making a plan. Taking the first step of that plan <laughs> <laughs> sometime in 2021. Uh, yes, but no, that that's tough because uh, we, to Lindsay and I, love to to design or you know attempt at design uh, the apartment, and those things do not work at all in terms of aesthetic uh it is yeah. tough yeah it's, it's just like i put the the bar it looks like a handicap assessment <laughs> rail and so we put it on the couch like it kind of slides halfway into the couch but it looks like someone's like needs it to get out of the like couch. a rocker <laughs> yeah like there's like oh let me <laughs> so give it time Justin. we'll see what your doms how your doms manifest <laughs> yeah. you might need it to get to the bathroom so either oh it's just a tough clash because yeah work at oakland does not fit the cozy modern yeah i think that um there is like this uh i i know because i i, I watched uh one of my favorite design shows is grand designs it's such a good palette cleanser it's got this guy from the uk who just is sort of like very cynical about everybody's home design but they're always looking at modern homes and sometimes people will go too far on the spectrum of like minimalist like they'll walk in the room and it just looks like an like an empty warehouse or something like that. And you're like, you you just look poor. <laughs> it's like, you don't, this is the way anyone lives here. It looks like you're squatting here, right? <laughs> exactly. So he's like, yeah, but it doesn't look like a house. But he's very, he loves really good design. And I feel like there was just a point in my home design acceptance that I just moved into that this wasn't going to look as sterile as my cold little design heart had desired. And that it would just meant, it just meant buying nicer looking equipment. So like when I put rings in my living room, I thought, um, well, okay. So my solution for that was, was brackets that almost look like an industrial, the anchors look like an industrial thing. And then I bought some black carabiners and then I spent extra money on an unnecessarily fancy ring setup, which has, uh, a release on it that they can, in a, in a, in a spring. So it draws them up or it pulls them down. Right. And you just set them where you want, or you can pull them off the hooks and then the carabiners and then you don't have it. And you just have sort of this industrial looking ceiling element. That's you put some plants on there when you're not using it. Yeah, you could put plants on there. And I put that thing in there and I thought for sure that that's was my thing and it was gonna be very invasive. But Nova just, my daughter sits, just just hangs on that literally like 80% of the time that she's there. And I'm like, this is great. Like she's developed pull-ups in like mm. a period of like a couple yeah. of months. She's got pull-ups, like strict pull-ups and just 10. And, and then I didn't put her in classes to get that. And she's got skin the cats and she's got like L working on like L sit chins, you know, and that's just stuff she just tries on her own. I was like, oh man, this is perfect. And it's such a simple tool. So I think that's a, a one that is okay to have. I was also very worried that my homeowners association was gonna complain about my rings outside. But because they were all black, a bunch of people couldn't tell what they were. <laughs> they didn't know. They was like, oh man, those rings. Oh, I, th I see. I thought that they, I think, I think someone thought they were wind chimes or something. And nice. I was like, oh yes. Cause they're porcelain. Clean, yes. clean, clean, <laughs> clean. <laughs> but then the opposite thing happened is that some of the more particular people in the neighborhood, uh, um, which I'm thankful for, I did just rings started showing up on, in, in their back, in their backyards nice. and on their things too. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like some people saw it and I they were gonna get upset by it, but instead they, they were inspired. That's so as long as it's not done in a tacky manner, I mean, if it is, then it's your space. It's up it's to just, you. But you I'm saying you can inspire. You. Yeah, right, right, but you did, if you do it a particular way, you can inspire other people to do it too. And now they move more than they would have. So I think that's positive. So front lever and planche or yours. You added planche, I feel like. No, he had planche for stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. Two pieces of equipment okay. that I got for New Year's. Okay. All right. So. And then to begin his foray into the expensive Fort Collins real estate market. And yeah, and yeah. so you're gonna. Four columns makes it. Yeah, the four columns makes it. Yes, makes it where? Into my goals. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, actually, I, I did look at uh, Loveland. For There's a house? condo right next to Darkheart. Mm, coffee shop, legit coffee shop. Yeah, pretty cool. It's quite the commute. And and London's got the or not London. Uh, Loveland's got those. Um, that like what's it called Foundry or whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. area that's pretty cool yep you got a little wannabe downtown yep dude i mean i i'll come out and say it if fort collins doesn't pivot 
relatively soon, Loveland's going to catch them in 10 years, and it's going to be a cooler place. Because Loveland has significantly less restrictions on what can be done for businesses than Fort Collins does. And that's benefited them for the past 25 years. But once rich people are like, eh, Fort Collins, sounds like that's a lot of work. I can just buy something cool and build it custom how I want and only have to visit the city three times instead of 30. I'll just build it in Loveland. I mean, that's what happened. That's that's why Fort Collins even existed, right? I mean, this is just the story of uh, parts of Longmont in proximity to Boulder. Exactly. Because they were like, I don't want to deal with Boulder, but I still want to do something cool. So they just did it. And then there there you go. And Longmont was the first city in Colorado that got that got fiber, right? Because they didn't have to deal with Boulder's restrictions around how to do that. They were just like, we want it. Let's do it. Yeah, it's just as cities become more built out, they become more like static. They're more rigid. They're harder to um, make change in. And some of the newer places on the on the outside, proximity still matters. I really think it does. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that it's a good idea. I think you should get. I think now, if anyone's listening and you can, it's not a terrible time. We've been looking at real estate go up for a long time, and like, there's not. I don't know if there's going to be a true reset, but. Yeah, right now things are, at least with interest rates too, in a spot where if you can make it happen, it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, there's not going to be less land and less places to build stuff in the future. I mean, I'm not saying I double down on Detroit, but <laughs> if you've got a decent place around you, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Excellent. So Travis, what's your uh, yeah, so New my Year's goals? New Year's, New Year's resolution. Uh, I think that for, um, I've always been very interested in meditation and mindset stuff, theory, obviously philosophy has been a big passion motivator for me to even like learn Chinese and stuff like that. That was my original motivation for learning Chinese. Um, the, I think I just would like to put as big of an emphasis on my mental game as I do on my physical game. So in in my training and in my operations, like I put a lot of time into business and the brand and on the, on the physical side, I put a lot of time into, into training and developing and still trying to grow and learn and be excited about movement, um, specifically parkour and, you know, the, the legacy martial arts stuff that I've been doing. Uh, and then we've been doing breaking as well. And I really have felt really good about that, even though I'm, I still seem to be aging uh, as the, as the world turns around the sun, right? The, uh, I've been really excited to spend time and, and still learn and experience development and growth in the physical sense, right? Uh-huh. Um, and now putting more of an emphasis on the mental sen- sense uh, of things and developing skills that can change my experience and my mindset and make me more resilient. We had talked about recovery being super important in, uh, um, in training, especially as we age. Like really the long game is mastering recovery and as you grow, and I feel like the mental side of that has huge, huge, pays huge dividends. So my focus has shifted from um, more like doing of the physical stuff and a ton of like research and interest and practice on, on the mental stuff. And so that's been different from the past because I, have you guys ever tried meditation before? Anything like that? Uh, yes. I guess passively. no, because because yeah, because it, because it's been pretty passive. I'm just gonna say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, not so I much. Had a large intention on it. Yeah, and then you know, Colin and I were talking about doing some uh, last last night, and it's definitely something with that exists in in Chinese culture. That I've had a ton of exposure to, but um, really trying to implement a like a focus on it has been is what is what the resolution is is to spend as much time sort of working on that attention. And really it just comes down to where am I placing my attention? Mm-hmm. And the discipline is exploring different ways to do that. And I think that to interest, if people are not interested, to make people interested, we understand that meditation is a very, is just as broad of a field as move, as movement is, as far as like what your practice may be in relationship to, to meditation. So by meditation, we just mean placing like a focus, um, an attention, a deliberate attention on something. Um, and so there's meditation for um, mindfulness meditation where you're trying to become more like aware of your thoughts and what's going on around you so that you can reconcile that. 
and have that as a strength. And then there's focus meditation, which is like maybe an element of training where you're focusing on a particular thing in your mind, like developing the skill of like being able to work with fear or something like that, um, being able to work with courage or being able to focus on a movement. There's experiential meditation where you're trying to get into a particular state of mind in order to do work or achieve stuff. And then, you know, back to mindfulness and breaking all that down so that that's not under control. So I think that there's just a huge field there to, to play in, a huge space to play in. And right now it just has this sort of, to most people I think has a stigma of, I'm going to sit down and then something is going to happen to me. And, or I'm going to think about something mm-hmm. and I'm trying to go beyond that and explore the other, the other disciplines involved. So um, I just watched a documentary and if you do that well enough, you may call down a UFO. <laughs> oh, was this on YouTube or this TikTok? This was an Amazon documentary. Oh. Um, woo. So this, I got started on this because we were talking about aliens with Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's an episode on its own. Right. Aliens with yeah. Olaf. And, uh, <laughs> and so I was just watching it while I was working on the new gym design. And uh, it finally got to an interesting episode where it talked about meditation and uh, something about consciousness, consciousness being a quantum uh ability for all beings in 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 the universe and they're saying well so and i was starting to laugh at this you know me yeah i'm like okay it is funny uh, prove it uh but then uh the next like clip is like this guy and he's uh, apparently has done this three times where he's called down the same ufo through his meditation Hmm. he's filmed all three of them it's the same three lights and they they come out like that and they're above his apartment so i was like oh legit interesting legit and then there's uh there's and so there's several of these instances where people have been meditating and they the the intention is to communicate with a ufo and there's like a couple clips where there's like it's it's flying away and then they ask it to come back and it interesting there you go sir yeah this is a nice step uh, into like mental delusion in my opinion but (laughs) that's a good segue so i'm glad you brought this up because i do think that the way that i position myself to meditation now is that it is literally it's like anything else it's like a type of mental health to some degree there is no like i'm i'm gonna sit down and then i'm going to like meditate in this way it's gonna call aliens in and that's like the there's no line between that and then just really being super distracted by fantasy in my opinion like if you're i mean they're potentially you know depending on how you frame that there might be different repercussions for it (laughs) for example if you believe you're making life decisions um based on dragon ball maybe but for the most part you're probably gonna be sobered but if you're making life decisions on the three alien ships that you haul over your apartment (laughs) you know in you know birmingham (laughs) unless he's right you could be right. There's always the chance you could be right. There is that chance. But it's still at the core of it. To me, it is what is the experience of consciousness and how are we navigating that? Yeah, that's what that's the muscle I'm trying to build is how am I experiencing conscious, my, you know, my conscious self and then breaking down what's real. And a huge part of that exercise for me is understanding what isn't real, thinking about things. And focusing on things and realizing what is really false ideas anger perception ego goodies like that that can make me more resilient and have a better understanding of other people and in the world and if my meditation is focused on i mean i'm sure it's a type of meditation alien calling meditation or whatever and someone out there is gonna be like well as you can see it's really it's quite legit right but that's just that's i think a stigma around meditation is that you're trying to achieve something like that but just for me, i'm just telling you have a phone ready <laughs> it's just like just set up just set up like yeah. a phone and a tripod and a key light or and like get like an like... infrared camera and just set it up when you go meditate on like the above your garage and yeah the patio up yeah there, and then just kind of aim it to the sky just a bit that's all we're asking yep. you don't have to change anything that you're doing just you know when you go up there, they, yeah they were saying that they were little... just they were they were just like kind of thinking about their place in the universe and really kind of, and how insignificant uh, contemplating consciousness and and mm-hmm. uh, and what it is on a on a quantum level as, uh, uh, as far as I can understand. Uh, so I really love what you said the other day um, when we were having some passive conversation about psychedelic narcissism. Yes. When the idea of psychedelic narcissism is that the people who take 
psychedelics or taken psychedelics, both in clinical environments and on Joe Rogan's podcast. Sugar and the large. Oh, no, 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 coffee. Water. <laughs> oh, sugar and the large water. Right. They they have this idea that they've somehow experienced something that no one else can understand, and therefore other people can't connect with them. Right. This idea that once you've had these experiences, you're sort of above everyone else in consciousness and some sort of like it's cool hierarchy. Right. I I mean I yeah cool. Okay. <laughs> Again, so, they yeah. might be right. They might be right. There is. In which case, if they're right, that's cool. Uh, so the, yeah, this idea that there is some sort of enlightenment that's completely different than the experience of just, of just being here, I think is, is, is pretty disconnected from the yeah, that's complete true, experience. Right? Yeah. Right. So what you said that I thought was really cool was like, uh, if people are talking to people from other dimensions, then I'm kind of like, Di- you know distrusting of that because you still are operating within the physics of, oh, of yeah. your of your existence right yes and yeah. this is a very cool was, uh, oh I, was, I said something about dark matter i was like uh um oh if you're trying to communicate with beings from another dimension you can't get there by taking uh something from our realm and just, from our dimension just a just a molecule what is that, a leaf or something ayahuasca <laughs> you can't just burn a plant and then get to another dimension, dimension. I feel like you would need something right because the physics of you, to get we there. could go in on that one <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i got some points on that one but at least <laughs> but and there are ways to sort of bend those rules but i but i remember the first time i think it was listening to sam harris or someone where they said that one of the main problems so with with like the fringe like spiritual and like re, you know religious and all these ideas about um what could be that we can't directly experience in our shared reality is that they're making broad claims about physics. And I was like, well, that's sort of a boring way of explaining it. I don't know if I quite get that. I thought it was wrong. I was like, yeah, you know what? You really are making broad claims about physics when you're like, I can do all these things. I can make all these promises and I experience all these things. But the only thing is I'm experiencing them and you're not. There's no way for us to see it in our shared experience. Yeah. Make broad claims about physics, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, for the most part, you should be able to share your experiences. Otherwise... It it like, just or own. replicate it in other people. Otherwise, it just doesn't feel like, yeah, it's just in your own universe. And you might as well just not talk about it. If you're trying to share it by telling me that I need to do it, then, yeah. I don't feel like that's sharing. Just telling me that you, that's bossing. Yep. So I think that the, that to sort of like tie that one up for as far as news resolution goes, I joked with Jesse that I, I was trying to land somewhere behind, somewhere between Zaheer and Uncle Iroh by the end of the year. Maybe like a stable Zaheer. I'll need to watch. And a more... Oh, Zaheer was very... He's in he's two very seasons, stable. right? He just wasn't... Yeah. The second one. So I'll need to watch. Second and again. four. Zaheer, you can't think like... He's the airbender from Korra. Yeah, but he's like a subtle guy. It's like, you got to pay attention to like... Oh, he's freaking great. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like a less sociopathic version <laughs> of him. With all the compassion of Uncle Iroh. <laughs> But with the serious intentions and focus of Zaheer. Yeah, I just want to be like, wasn't very focused. He just wanted to uh-huh. enjoy life. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, I want I want that, but maybe not quite so old. Like, I don't know if I want to wait until I'm I, Uncle Iroh age, which is what? How old is that dude? He, he probably plays something in the 70s and 90s. It doesn't really able matter. To cool. And then he's in spirit world. Right, exactly. exactly. So, he was able to lose, like, 30 pounds and... And escape us. <laughs> Prison, right, yeah. Oh, well, he did that Uncle Iroh. Thing. You know what's funny on Facebook? At What was it? Last year, I swear there were New Year's resolutions going around and someone had, oh, I'm going to do the Uncle Iroh workout, which is basically you mimic his workout in that he did in jail. in jail. In the, yeah. In the ship's hold. <laughs> in the ship's hold when he was held by the by, uh, yeah, Fire Nation. Oh, gosh. Was it Fire? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Nice. So, I, what I, yeah, what I'm going for is that I don't want to wait until I'm old to have that degree of insight about my own mind. And I just feel like I can do more and be like better that. if I'm less distracted. Because I, I'm highly aware in Chinese um, philosophy and, cult- and culture, they have something that's called like monkey mind. And this is this idea that your attention like just pulls you around. Right? Like you'll be like thinking for a second, next thing you know, oh shoot, what was I thinking about? I don't know. And the monkey mind just sort of like pulls your head mm. and thoughts everywhere to sort of like. I don't know, monkeys are pretty focused. That's I more know. like a dog mind. Dogs are like that. Like, Dude, stuff just like, like crosses slower. their path and they're just like, 
Yeah, some, but I feel like it's slower. I feel like a dog would totally like be thinking for an hour about like, <laughs> I don't know, like his own tail. He's like, oh, it's going to move. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yep. True. Right. But the monkey mind is that constant like yeah. pulling and distracting and that chatter in your head. And oh, and actually some other people are kind of into this too, because uh, I know a lot of people just get like, I don't know if it's just depressed or lost on YouTube and start listening to Alan Watts, <laughs> who, you know, has some very poetic um, interpretations of like Eastern thought. And then uh, Nate Weston dropped that video, Skull Chatter. Did mm-hmm. you see the Skull Chatter video? So Skull Chatter comes from the monkey mind concept, which in Alan Watts' YouTube videos, where he's usually doing talks about his exploration of Eastern thought from Taoism, talks about the distraction and the, and, the, and the chatter that happens in the brain and that that's not like real, that's just like static to a degree, but we sometimes associate ourselves with it a lot. Mm-hmm. So the Skull Chatter video was inspired by Alan Watts and Nate Weston put that, put that um, series out or whatnot. So I think even if you listen to the videos, you'll hear like Alan Watts in the background. So yeah. it's yeah, it's very, very penetrating and definitely something we just need to be able to relax and step back and not be so intense in 2021. Mm-hmm. We really need a, a breather for like a, yep. <laughs> a better way. Sure. Yes. And, well, so. and it's like, I, I like it because it's, it's relaxed, I think is maybe the wrong word because you're intentional, right? Right. Relaxed is I'm not doing anything. I'm focused on doing nothing, right? I'm, I'm letting things go. But it's, it's this letting go of the unessential so that I can better double down and focus on the essential without it feeling like I have to, right? It's like if I have to carry something from one room to the next room, and that's what I'm focused on, but I'm also carrying my coffee and my sunglasses and my wallet and my phone. I'm like, I'm juggling all these things, right? Mm-hmm. Really, meditation is like, I'm going to set all of these other things down. Mm-hmm. I'm not like getting rid of them. I'm not throwing them out. I'm just putting them aside. And I'm going to carry this one thing to the next room. And if it's there and it's what I expected, I get to leave that there in the room, come back, grab all that other stuff and go on with my life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that being able to be in that place, the first step is sort of breaking that illusion and just being able to to recognize that that's an option. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, again, feel they're jerked around by every impulse, that they're just so out of control. We're literally just reacting to everything in in the moment that someone's throwing at us. And we're just like, what? Oh, mm, no. (laughs) And then you have that, angst like i always you know through business stuff often i just feel like there's this this weight of anxiety like this not a predator that's really scary but i feel like there's this lingering threat that just is there and 2021 has definitely felt like a lingering threat has been in the background like i can't just relax you know what i mean like if i if i almost feel half guilty for it being like cool i'm just gonna chill for a second and feel okay about life no you can't feel and then like in the site in that moment you'll just feel like nope you can't feel okay because this is about to happen or this could happen there's some lingering thought and so being able to, to sort of like the clarity piece of it yeah that you're talking about is really what i'm after at at an initial level um again all these things are really easy to sort of maybe conceptually get but to bring into practice to where it's just part of like your day-to-day so that's that i i'm gonna put you both on the spot if you could if you could condense into like two or three things that you're going to do the year to try and reinforce that that resolution right because i think for a lot of people that set goals or resolutions at the start of the year Mm -hmm. we often hear those stats where they're like oh if you start it in december you have a higher chance of like actually you know going through with it or most people fall off somewhere you know in the spring when the sun starts to like crest the horizon and they're like i don't need that anymore i'm free right so it's like people always fall off and reinforcement is a big thing when you're setting goals so if you could condense your like two or two or three things that you do to like reinforce that or what do you think you might do so often a lot of those things are oftentimes like i thought about this recently like why um like like self-improvement books are so interesting to me or philosophy or things about theory which sometimes feel less tangible and practical in the moment um and why and how i've read just hundreds of books that are of that nature Mm -hmm. and if you ask me to recall some things from those books just out of nowhere it's actually quite difficult but yet i know i've experienced growth from them and i'm not really sure why i i I mean i i have a better idea now but that's the feeling i get it's like okay well i've read all these hundreds of books and that's because i think that 
when I'm in that state of mind, when I'm learning, I'm actually undoing stuff. Like the exercise of reading a self-help book, we'll just call it that, but really we're talking about anything that's focused on improvement or understanding or discovery or trying to get what message is in a book. Mm -hmm. I'm actually decoupling and detaching prior ideas. I'm sort of like shedding stuff to get down to what's, to what's um, real. And so what I would, why I would tie that in and why I say this year is different for me for the mindset stuff is that I've already accepted it as something that is at the core of what my intention and interest is in even doing. So like for me, movement, I don't have to set oftentimes, I'm gonna move, like a year's gonna go by and I'm gonna be doing movement. I'm gonna be exploring movement and that's just part of me. I'm just gonna wake up and do it because I've moved out of the realm of needing a seminar or needing a class or needing a workshop or needing exact programming dictated to me for me to feel like it's permissible to even do. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes people have those feelings where it's like, okay, cool, well, I've gotta get in shape. Well, then I've got to get a class and I got to go to Target and I got to get the or the Lululemon or whatever. And I need all these things to make what I'm doing permissible. And then if I don't have direct instruction that is appealing to me, I'm not going to do it. And I'm constantly battling against looking for something from the outside to go and get and make me want to do it. Whereas I've moved with movement the other direction over the years. I'm just going to dance. I'm just going to do parkour. I'm always exploring that and independent of others there's growth and it's re represented that's one of the things if you just look at the content that i put out most of it's for me to mm -hmm. be like i recorded myself and i did it i'm going to do it and i'm going to get better so let's say that 2021 um covid does not diminish as we would like um snakes become sentient and mm -hmm. grow legs and we now have like you know snake people taking over detroit right and that's like the new threat on the horizon mm -hmm. what are you going to do amidst the sentient snake people or the aliens that this guy has called down in Birmingham or mm -hmm. wherever he is. Um, yeah. What are you going to do to reinforce amidst even all that chaos to still focus on your uncle Iroh Zaheer? Mm. Uncle Zaheer. Uncle <laughs> Zaheer. <laughs> yeah, well, the first thing I'm going to do is definitely call in those aliens for backup. Um, but I think more... Or you're calling the snake people if the, if the aliens come. At the core of what I've been experiencing so far with anxiety and, and meditation. I'm not a big anxiety person, but it's certainly an element of my, of my uh, conscious experience. Like I'm worried about working on it, anxiety. Does that make sense? Which in itself is anxiety. So being anxious is like a constant reminder that you need to work on not being so anxious. Sometimes <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night and I have anxiety about a task or a thing that's happening and it's really that not that serious, you know, but yet it consumes me and I sometimes I lose some sleep or I, night sweats or make up like, oh, what if I didn't blah, blah, blah. It gets you when your defenses are down, dude. Right. Yeah. And so what I want is for that stuff to not seem as overbearing when it does occur. Mm -hmm. And so for me, work on fear. I think at the core of it is fear, this destabilization, this feeling of a need for control and a lack of like, uh, yeah, of like clarity in those moments. So when that stuff is minimized, so if the snake people show up and they grow their legs and they've taken over what Wichita, Kansas, or whatever they're doing, right? Detroit, most likely. Detroit, most likely. All right. So they've got Detroit, Wichita, and, and the aliens have Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama. And this is all going on. If my fear is not controlling me and just completely consuming me, then I'll know that I've won. All right. Well, that's what I'm going for. The calm general. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When people come in and they're like, Hey, well, blah, 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 no one's here for classes, blah, 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 and something this happens, and I'm just like, I don't feel on the inside like I'm about to like seize up, then, and I'm just like, cool, <laughs> clarity, like, and I don't lose my cool. Like, that's another big thing. So, if you guys see me lose my cool throughout the year, just look at me and be like, mm, okay, I don't know if that's what we can make. A, do. We can make like a hand symbol. What, what, what was, was he here is, doing when he was like, he was like this? Yeah, way. he's got the two fists together or something like that. Or does he do the. We'll just do that. Just yeah. Be like, just be like, try. <laughs> you just look at me and be like, mm. just bring you jasmine tea. Bring it, mm. Jasmine tea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Justin, what about you? You you had a little bit of a mention of like, just, just oh, get yeah. that. Well, I was going to say, I yeah. uh, just like get that stuff in, in your way, right? So yep. that you can't interact in your daily life without it being there. Yes. It's one way. Yeah, like not that. quite to the level where I can just. Uh, depend on myself to do things because um either i enjoy doing them or because i uh, uh 
Yeah, I, I, uh, what Travis was, was saying earlier when he knows, he knows by the end of the year he's going to be doing movement. That I'm not as secure in that. So, because I definitely. Well, there's well, certain go. movements, but in terms oh, of okay. my goals, right? I'm, I don't, I can't guarantee you that I'm going to be hanging upside down doing leverage by the end of the year. So, the only way that I, I have um, a way to ensure that is just put it in my way, put it in front of my fridge. Mm-hmm. So, that's going to have to be the. The more physical, what happens? Simpler. When, what happens when Lindsay's like, "I'm so tired of all this stuff in my way." <laughs> <laughs> She's already like bust her toe on it like twenty times. Ooh, <laughs> those parallel bars. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll just put it in a different section of the kitchen, and then I'll move it. That might make it worse. Yep, actually. it does make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's unexpected. It's like I'm really worried about that. Like, but I moved it. You asked me to move it. I moved. It. Yep. I don't really worry about that with the new gym because it's like the new gym just feels like one massive new cell phone. And whenever you get a new cell phone, you crack it in the first, if you're going to crack it, it's in the first week. Yeah. Or it's in the last week before you upgrade. <laughs> or it's in the last week before you upgrade. <laughs> yeah. And so I've kind of just like, we're going to have to have this like, this orientation, like yep. exercises where the first few weeks of curriculum is literally just going around and like moving in the space and touching things yes. and sort of like kicking them building that mental map subconsciously yeah. of where you're at so people just don't you know just ball up everything yes yeah because uh there's we change things like one piece at a time here and so you you generally have a complete map you can, yeah you can fill but on. this one's everything's new new layout new front door new, new location break room new pit new heights you know? new corners to be discovered so and, and right keep, now like i can like plan an entire class just by imagining the gym and picturing where i'm going to teach stuff i often do but, that you know before right? a workshop but now i don't even know where the plyo box is or if plyo boxes will exist in this new gym so sorry monkey mind so how are you gonna just just to make sure you get the opportunity to say that what what are you doing to measure like are there any milestones you're going for like a tuck first um you're going for like the you know mindful mover leap forward push up you go in for the plans progression stuff or do you have any milestones or are you just like these aren't super important for me to show off i wanted them to be more of a movement in the apartment um, with these things being like um like bonus stuff i really just wanted a bar in my apartment where i can hang and do stuff um uh, and parallel bars just so i could get some pushing activities in so it's not like i I really wanted planche and those skills uh, and uh, and lever, yeah. But those are just the tools. That's just what those tools are made for. So, so the so good. the goal for you actually is to like is to to be able to inject more movement into your home. Yes, into the specific area of my home. And yep. and the like, just the the north star is planche or front yeah. lever. And if you change that, it's yeah. fine as long as you've injected movement. Yeah. Because I can't precision these things. They're they right. The I can't jump on them and mm-hmm. do what I'm normally doing on them because they're not as stable. Uh, so, so I do need to uh, learn a, a couple different exercises. So, so yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. Mm-hmm. Cool, I like right. it. Well, and putting them in front of the fridge where you go for your snacks <laughs> is, a, is a nice reminder. So long as you don't get in the habit of like, oh, in order to open the fridge, I just have to move oh, this. Yeah. That's yeah. now how it's I open the fridge. One of, my one, earliest, <laughs> one of my earliest, like, like sort of framing of like diet framing or discipline ideas that I had, I worked as a manager in, in a tech, um, in a cell phone company and had these, um, a bunch of, uh, people who reported to me and they were coming up with these weird diets, like cabbage diet. I'm like, you guys just need to do the cheetah diet. I'm like, what's cheetah diet? I mean, you gotta run for your food before you get it. So you can eat whatever you want, but you have to figure out what the caloric equivalency is and then do the work before you get it. And some of them were like, that's funny, I'm gonna try it. And and what would happen is they would implement just that simple practice of being like, if I get the impulse to wanna eat something, I go and I train even just for a little bit and for 50 calories or something. And but by the time they're done with it, they don't even want it. Because really the impulse to eat was maybe boredom or anxiety yeah. or something else. And they yeah. fixed it with the other the cheetah diet. You want it? You go get it. Okay. Cheetah diet. Circa yeah. two thousand five or something. If were, yeah, if you were. Uh, yeah, if you were. Uh, BC two thousand five. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm telling you, Iro. It's his. It's you his, were. You were a little more unethical. You'd write a book on that and you could make some money off that. Yeah, that I'm was sure, the joke. I'm sure there are tons of people out there who uh, 
would fall for that. Oh, I think, and I don't think it's like a horrible, even little distraction because I remember one time somebody came in like, so how much cheetah diet do I have to do to get a Reese's peanut butter cup? Or is that even on the diet? I'm like, it's whatever you want is on the diet. You just have to figure <laughs> out what the cheetah distance equivalency is and <laughs> map it out. Like, what's it worth to you? What do you think? Like, I feel really bad about Reese's peanut butter cups. So what? You talking about two miles? Yeah, probably two miles. <laughs> you know, just like, never, what? right. But other diets are di- be like, give me, give me, yeah. give me give there's <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my cheetah diet. I took it. Um, no, but I think that a lot of people, uh, feel bad on certain diets where they're like oh i'll never be able to have a reese's peanut butter cup again yeah but the cheetah diet says it's okay you just gotta find what your what your yeah i will will say that like for goal setting it's often better certainly for me especially for others to do like some sort of positive Reinforcement, reinforcement rather than a negative where it's like oh i want a reese's but i gotta punish myself right by doing this grueling you know half mile as fast as i can do it right till i sweat blood like that's what i gotta oh, do to eyes. punish reese's and i'm like at least is, is not worth that okay? <laughs> just eat the reese's and you'll be fine uh, uh, right? I think th- it's I- more like it's got to be more positive reinforcement like mm-hmm. oh i did that half mile i actually don't want the reese's right. anymore uh, because I already got that. So like, we're up against, I think that, that the gal that I was working with, um, one of a friend of mine, still friends of mine who was into it, was doing something called the cabbage diet, where like you were just on this diet where you consume cabbage. It's like a cabbage fast, basically. Your Ooh, cabbage and like something That's pretty avatar like too, actually. Right? My yeah. cabbages! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was like, look, it can be permissible to consume whatever you want if you come to an agreement with yourself about what it's worth to you. And so that's why I thought it was a little more, it was, definitely wasn't one of those situations where I was, it was like punishment. And that's why I kind of feel like I had jokingly made up the idea because I felt like people were doing things and taking cheat days and sort of like framing things up in a manner that's associated with guilt versus achievement, mm-hmm. right? Sure, you know what? You've got a goal in your mind that you're gonna go to a buffet and eat all of the buffet, fine. You know, I know a lot of people who are like, I'm gonna train and be focused for this long and then my reward will be this at the end. And whether that's a psychological, in parody in itself i don't know very but it's better than just beating yourself up for guilt eating the no. the reese's peanut butter cup and then hating yourself very few good comes from like a, a negative reinforcement like, like that i'm mm-hmm. not good enough or oh i gotta do this to pay for this and i oh, i'm it's like that it's the sinner man concept mm-hmm. right like i have sinned therefore i need to like do all this good to repair when it's just like if you do good as just a default Mm -hmm. and you just try that then you have a little bit more grace when you do like mess up and you're like you know what i had that reese's peanut butter but you know what i've been eating clean for like three months Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter it's okay absolutely and it's that i think that there could be another conversation to be had about the fact that i don't feel i don't know how you guys feel i don't feel like i i feel like i am content and happy and satisfied with my life and that's something that i work on um as a feeling um and i don't need to have that in conflict with ambition does that make sense Mm -hmm. like i don't need to feel like if i'm not scared and feel like i'm not feeling good about myself like my life my life's great so i don't need to like push towards this goal where i think my life will be great when i get there my life's great already so if i stop anywhere in between then and now it's still great Oh, yeah. In fact, that's the reinforcement I use for all of my stuff. Because mm. I'm like, wait a second. I'm not happy with my life in this instance. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. It actually just makes me angry. And then I'm like, what do I need to kill? What in my life <laughs> needs to die right now? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not feeling like my life is where it needs to be, right? And then it's simply like, oh, I forgot to eat today. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, I'm <laughs> angry. And I just eat. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, I have killed hunger. Right. It's defeated. And that's self-awareness. That's in many ways, that's mindfulness meditation. That's the ability to sort of step back and be like, wait, this feeling of like a deficit is pulling me around. Where's it coming from? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just need snacks. I just need Snickers, right? <laughs> so you, know, you got that. And then also the idea that it it's not the other way around, right? It's not that I have this deficit in my life. And once I accomplish these things, then I can be satisfied. It's to become satisfied first. And then you're able to achieve those things in a manner. You can still get them done the other way. Yep. But the way that you can get them done when you're already satisfied with who you are 
One of those, though, at the end of the day is I spent the most of my day feeling great. Mm -hmm. And I had little bits of moments where I didn't feel great. And I was like, oh, squash, 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 right? And so I finished my day and I'm like, cool, 90% of my day was amazing. Even doing the mundane, go to work, do that stuff, right? Or the flip side is I felt really good when I squashed these little things. And so 90% of my day was mundane and basic. And I had 10% when I squashed those things that I made accomplishments that I felt good about myself, right? Mm -hmm. They're the same end result. You're still in your same bed. You still earned your same amount of money. But one of those, you get to go to bed and be mm. like, today was a great day. 90% was awesome. Or you get to go, 10% of my day, I, I really nailed my goals. And I, no, personally, one about, of those sounds a lot better to me than Way the better. That's the way it should be done. And, and in, if we have that, we'll be much happier. And we'll train much better, too, because we'll know that we're training because we want to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we're spending our time out in a way that's we're working on being more enjoyable. Um, yeah, we'll all be happier. Heck yeah, we'll all be happier if we can have that approach. Absolutely. So we'll have to check in um, with... Uh, yeah, take notes, Colin. Yeah. For, in December, for a podcast in December, we'll have <laughs> to, to see where we are on our... Our goals our for journeys. the year. Yeah, we should probably maybe touch... we'll do a six-month or... Yeah, we really need to be a once a quarter, maybe. I kind of feel like... Maybe not just well, the whole doesn't, episode. Yeah, but... I was going to say, it doesn't need to be in, in their face, the check-in. We could do It could be good. It'd be inspiration, because if people hear it and they're like, Dang, I forgot all about my, <laughs> my yeah, yeah, maybe. Good point. All right. Write down quarterly. We'll do it quarterly. We'll just do it. Check it. Hey, Justin, how's your front lever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we'll do. I do have, I already have steps. My little hands. Uh, that's one of the biggest thing I realized. That bar is big. My little hands. I can't I have to, I have to, I didn't know that front lever has to be in false grip like that. Oh, um, it doesn't have to be, but it's certainly easier. Yeah. No, well, I'm easy. I said it has to be so who are these guys who, who are these guys, guys? <laughs> <laughs> people with front levers the front lever people <laughs> where's the front lever committee <laughs> oh man yeah that's my biggest hurdle so that's i, I already seen that strength improve is holding the bar like this because uh right because i can't hold bars like like a like a dylan baker hand where the thumb is like down here basically Dude, got long the eight thumbs yes right if you guys you guys know how the thumb is like oh, yeah, down yeah, there, there so you can grab the bar like a freaking vice yeah. Mine is just... Were they saying Neanderthals had that thumb position? It's similar, yeah. Similar thumb position, right. They... Yeah, so the one thing to think so about I is you couldn't really throw. Is you're taking the wrist, a lot of the wrist stuff out of the equation, but you need the mobility of the wrist in there to make that really work. So that if you can get your like nice 90 degrees for like your false grip, that, that would probably improve the ability to do that. Also, here, like that's why when I teach climb-ups to people who pay attention, like the they're getting the they start with the wrist over and then they're doing the, the that was my, that was my wrist, right you know like that no no one like that <laughs> yeah. stop the stop. wrist goes over and then and then they're just moving through this range right yeah. which is just at the wrist a lot of people when they look at pops they don't realize until they start trying them is that if you're coming from your fingertips you're actually passing several joints mm -hmm. and there's another you know few inches there that you've got to go to get into yeah. that position my front lever is going to be different because you're not trying to top out but it's the same it's similar yeah. idea he'll be doing front lever muscle-ups mm -hmm. yeah, right into a tough. planche yeah uh, it it's, it's it's very similar i think you're taking out this joint here because yeah you can't hang from the wall just on the on the, those last two digits but uh, yeah front lever if you're if you're rowing it down eventually the angle comes like at that mm -hmm. very difficult to hold that so if you're just stuck in there, you, you're yeah, you're only working. And, and then you also joint. get so yeah, you had, you had you remove some of the joint strength required and from the other joints because if yep. you're over gripped all the way over, then you're sort of just already on the tension of the wrist, uh -huh. and so it takes something out of the equation. Cool. Well, I look forward to seeing where we get in the end of quarter one, 2021. That's right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, if you are watching us on YouTube, you can listen to us on any of the major podcast platforms and if you're listening to us while you're on the go um and you want to sit down and see our pretty faces we are on youtube i don't know if we're posting on facebook but we're we're out there youtube what's, yeah. what matters anyways so just watch us on youtube thanks for tuning in appreciate it and we will see you next time Woo! <laughs>